Extinct bird with dinosaur-like claw may soon be resurrected and living among us. Now you're going to see what it looks like. Sir Richard Owen standing next to a moa skeleton holding the first bone fragment belonging to a moa ever found. You can see how huge it is. It's almost twice as tall as a human. This is by Ashley Cowie on Ancient Origins. And uh, they've been uh, trying to somehow give life to extinct animals from the woolly mammoth to various other Tasmanian devil and various other animals. And now we're coming to this. This extinct bird with a dinosaur-like claw is uh, planned to be resurrected again. A clawed flightless bird, it went extinct, extinct in New Zealand in the late 13th century and it might be brought back to life. This is what the scientists at Harvard University claim. Nearly three decades ago, archaeologists exploring a cave system in Mount Owen in New Zealand discovered a dinosaur-like claw with flesh, and it had scaly skin, as we can see on the picture. This is a picture of the claw with the scaly skin. Scaly skin? Well, this is basically, uh, all birds have scaly skin anyway. Uh, it's huge, actually. After testing, it proved to be the 3,300-year-old mummified remains of an upland moa, a Megalopteryx didinus. The DNA analysis published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences established that there were at least 10 species of moa which appeared around 18.5 million years ago, but they were all wiped out from existence in what scientists call the most rapid human-facilitated megafauna extinction documented to date. In now using their DNA recovered from the toe, Harvard scientists now mapped and compiled the first almost complete genome of a, quote, little bush moa, unquote, moving closer to the possibility that extinct genomes will soon become de-extinct. That is the whole idea of bringing back vanished species they'll bring them back to life by slipping the genome into the egg of a living species, has been regarded by some reviewers as equal to the dark fictional works of Dr. Frankenstein, Frankenstein sorry, while others, uh, it says, has been describing it in a lighter light as being Jurassic Park-like, according to the article on State News. So let's not enter the moral debate, but uh, that's a whole other, other subject. A closer look at the processes and innovations of a team of scientists at Harvard University. They're aiming to resurrect vanished species. And uh, the work of Clotier and his group of 2018 on the DNA of the Little Bush Moa was recently published in a peer review paper. The DNA was reconstructed from the sample taken from the creature's toe. But scientists know that a lot of genetic restructuring is needed before a species can be revived. For the Moa, Scientists have said they may have to use a one-pound emu egg to incubate it in there. Now, work has already been ongoing to map the passenger pigeon genome and the woolly mammoth, revive and restore in collaboration with the UC Santa Cruz Paleogenetics Lab, has sequenced DNA from 37 passenger pigeons, including two whole genomes. And speaking of the latest project to reporters at State News, Morten Eric Allentoff of the Natural History Museum of Denmark, an expert on MOA DNA, said it is a significant step forward, as well as the woolly mammoth and passenger pigeon among the nearly complete extinct genomes. Scientists have almost completed two of our human cousins, Neanderthals and Denisovians, the dodo bird, the Tasmanian tiger, and the great auk, which died out in the North Atlantic in the mid-19th century. I mean, can you imagine bringing back Neanderthal and Denisovians? That's just unbelievable. According to Harvard's Alison Coltier, the little Bushmore team tried to match 900 million nucleotides scattered across millions of DNA pieces and tried to match them to specific locations of the genome of the emu, a close relative of all nine moa species. Bird genomes, including the eight other extinct moa species, have similar genes 
for particular traits tend to be on the same chromosome and arrive relative to other genomes in a similar way. Similarly, the Mammoth Project, which is being conducted by Revive and Restore in collaboration with Harvard's George Church Lab, has been studying elephant chromosomes to better understand how mammoth DNA might be organized. Scientists believe that herpes infection killed off the mammoth, and if it was made de-extinct, its immune system could be enhanced to resist this virus. You might be asking, like I did, was it all this DNA and genome mapping sorted out before the 1996 birth of Dolly the Sheep and the Roslyn Institute in Scotland? Kind of, the answer is. The problem is putting DNA into an egg is, indefinite, is infinitely more difficult than fertilizing mammals. The cloning method applied to make Dolly the sheep is fine from a mammalian egg, but that does not work in birds, at least so far. There is no doubt the final parts of the cloning puzzle will be solved, and given enough time, maybe not in our time, a country or a private enterprise will inevitably work out how to clone us. So this is by Ashley Cowie on Ancient Origin. Kindly support my Patreon account since that's the only way I can continue what you like seeing on this channel. Thank you. You'll find it in the description box below.